Hi ladies, thank you so much for joining us for the How to Process Grief webinar. We are so glad that you are here and so glad that you are ready to take your next steps into healing, next steps into community, and just next steps in growing closer to Christ. My name is Nicole and I'm the founder of 1212 Ministries. We have an amazing time planned for you. So I want you to sit down, get comfortable, just remove any sort of distractions and just prepare your hearts and your minds to receive. So we are gonna start off with a little bit of worship and then our amazing special guest, Emily Moorhead with The Couch Therapy is going to come in and share some practical steps and practical ways that you can really walk through and process your grief. Let me pray for us and then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for technology, Lord. Thank you for every single person that is tuning in right now, Heavenly Father. Please just bless our time together. Remove any sort of distractions and allow us to fully, fully pay attention and to connect with you, Lord. There is so much going on in our wor world right now, and we are just asking for healing. Uh, Lord, if there are any sort of just feelings and emotions that are just buried down, can you bring those to the surface, Lord, so we can begin to heal? We love you, and we are so grateful for you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So you guys, I have just such a sweet, sweet friend. Her name is Stephanie Daniels, and she is going to come in and lead us in worship. And so just get ready to receive. Here we go. Um, I am excited to lead a song for you called Defender. It's one of my absolute favorite songs, and it's such a great reminder of the Lord's goodness to us. Um, he um, is a valiant defender of us because he loves us, and all our posture has to be is one of praise and worship and just being still and bowed before him. So um, here we go. All right. 
defender. He cares for us so much and he is just willing to do whatever it takes to care for us and he is so faithful and so good. Thank you Stephanie so much for that amazing worship. So ladies it's time. It is time to jump right in. Emily Moorhead. She is with The Couch Therapy and she specializes in grief counseling. She is so amazing. She has an amazing story um, and is just a wonderful person inside and out. So definitely, I'm suggesting, I just grab mine, grab your notepad, grab a pen, and get ready to take some notes. And again, silence your phone, uh, make sure that you have coffee, tea, whatever you need, and just prepare your heart and your mind to receive. So, ladies, I would love for you to meet Emily Moorhead. Hey, I'm Emily, and I just want to thank Nicole and 1212 Ministries for having me today. I'll tell you a little bit about myself, and then we're going to jump into some work today. I'm a licensed professional counselor in the state of Texas, and I have an office in Plano, Texas, and I'm offering telehealth right now throughout the state of Texas. So welcome to my virtual office right now. Um, I've been in the field for a little bit over nine years and work with couples um, with relationship issues, with um, a desire to build better communication and a stronger friendship, as well as work with couples on their sexual relationship. 
And I specialize in work with women with infertility, um, specifically anxiety, depression, and grief work. So those are my passions. Um, as well as being a therapist, I'm a mama to two boys. Um, and so one of those sweet angels is a baby that was conceived through an infertility journey. So I always say that I worked in grief, um, but I didn't live in grief until I experienced my own infertility journey. So today, as we're talking about grief and we're going to walk through it, um, I just want you to understand a little bit about me so you can understand the knowing that I have in the grief journey that you may be presently walking. So I think that we should start this session with talking about a few permissions and some rules to set. Anytime that we're talking about grief, um, it can be in generalities, right? So it's not specific to you. It's different um, for every single person that's logged on tonight. Everyone's grief journey is so different and unique. And so I think one, just having a space where you can process but not compare, right? So your grief journey is going to be different than the person logged on five minutes after you, right? So just knowing that your grief is your own to hold, and no one can compare or take that from you. I also think it's important anytime that I do a training about grief that I like to just acknowledge that grief is grief in the eyes of the beholder of the grief. So a lot of times our society talks about grief in the way of mentioning death, right? That there is a death loss, therefore there's grief. Um, if you've lost someone that you love through death, you know that grief is absolutely a part of that journey. And I think sometimes in the infertility community, we just don't quite know where we land. And so just having a space tonight to say to you that if you feel like you're grieving, you are. I don't have to tell you if this is grief or not grief. In conferences or trainings, I always have someone raise their hand and say, hey, this is what I'm going through. Is this grief? Yes, it is, right? Anything that feels like grief, anything that feels like less than nurturing can be grief. And so just giving you space and permission tonight to know that this is what it is and that it can be grief, I think is really helpful. And also, I just want to tell you that tonight, as we talk about grief, it's going to feel heavy because grief is hard and the journey that you're walking is hard. And so self-care during this training is going to be really important. Self-care after this journey is going to be really important. So if you feel tense, if you feel anxious, and there's just a point where you're like, I don't know that I should be in this training, log off. It will not hurt Nicole's feelings. It will not hurt my feelings. We want you to do what is good for you tonight. And then after the training, we really want to encourage you to seek healing and health in yourself, whether that's through a self-care ritual that you have by journaling, reading your Bible, checking in with someone that you love, taking a bath, whatever it is that you need take care of yourself. Okay. So let's talk about what grief is and what it isn't, right? So grief is not just one emotion. I think a lot of the time when we're talking about grief, we think, okay, it's supposed to feel like this, right? But grief is actually a multitude of emotions. It's a high, it's a low, it's a roller coaster ride even. So what we know about grief is that it can be the same experience in a variety of emotions. And where we struggle in grief is when we try to fix it or we try to judge it. So a lot of times the patients that I see in my private practice will say, I don't know why I'm not doing this well, why I'm not grieving well. Red flag, there's no right way to do grief, right? Doing grief is living in pain. The most beautiful thing that you can do for yourself is acknowledging pain. So Megan Devine says that the most radical notion of grief is just letting something hurt. By saying this journey is hard, this loss is hard, this infertility is hard, and I'm going to acknowledge it. And by acknowledging it and speaking life into it, we actually just let something hurt. We don't try to fix it. We don't try to change it. We just let ourselves sit in pain. And that's actually what can be very, very healing. But there's a difference. There's a difference in grief, in suffering and pain, and sitting in pain, right? So when we are trying to judge ourselves or our experience, if we are suffering in pain, 
that means that there are things that we need to come alongside us to help support us in pain. So there is this experience of we're trying to understand our grief. We just kind of like mull around in it. We are mean to ourselves in it. We're judging our experience in it. We don't know why we're not doing this better or why this hurts so bad. When if we just say, man, this is hard, right? Infertility, this loss experience, this is just hard. And it can be what it is, which can be painful. And by letting ourselves sit in that pain and acknowledge it and not try to change it, but just be in it and just say, man, what a loss of a dream this is. Never imagined my life working out this way. Can't believe I had to cancel another round because of COVID. By just acknowledging it, it breathes this life into it that is so healing and it stops the resistance and it just lets it sit, which is hard for us. We cannot solve this grief journey. Dr. Google and all the treatments and eating the pineapple and finding the right, you know, way to lay after sex, like these can't solve the grief that we're experiencing. It puts a nice little band-aid on it, right? But we can't solve grief. We just have to let it exist. So there's this notion about suffering and grief and tending to grief. When I say tending, I want you to think about what comes into mind. So tending to grief to me is my new house plant addiction that has been created since quarantine, right? So I tend to my house plants. I check on them. If they're dry, I give them more water, give them more light. I'm nurturing. But very, very, very often in grief, we don't nurture ourselves. We blame ourselves. We make up stories about ourselves. We make up stories about our deserving. We make up stories about how this is going to end, how this is going to happen. Um, and a lot of times they're not kind. There's not a lot of nurture. We're not checking on ourselves to see if we need more water, more food, more friendship, more connection, more self-care, more meditation, more prayer. Sometimes we just resist that grit. Whereas if we tend to ourselves, we say, man, what am I feeling today? Oh, it feels heavy today. I'm going to get my favorite cup of coffee. I'm going to play my favorite song that just like lets me feel the feels. And I'm just going to let myself be in this instead of resisting it. I'm going to call my husband and tell him how I'm feeling. I'm going to ask for someone to check into me after this appointment. I'm going to unfollow this friend that keeps having all these baby showers, right? I'm going to tend to what my body is telling me that I need. So there's a saying in grief work that Megan Devine came up with, and it's pain gets supported, suffering gets adjusted. So when we lean into our pain and we play that song and we tend to ourselves and we get that cup of coffee or take that bubble bath, we are leaning into the pain and supporting it kindly. Can't fix it. We're going to let ourselves feel it, right? And so acknowledging where we need support. I talked a few um, times ago with Nicole about this really cool notion that Glennon Doyle taught me, which is basically the concept of sistering, which is why I love 1212, right? There's this concept that this carpenter, you know, back in the early carpentry days came up with and said, you know, if there's something a little bit wobbly and we have this L-shaped piece, we need to screw something in next to it so it can support it. So it's not kind of wonky, right? So building in this support, so where this piece is weak in this structure, there's something to hold it still and tight. Sistering, right? So where do I need support in my life to survive this grief, to survive this loss, to, to survive this immeasurable event that I'm experiencing? Where do I need to get support that's non-judgmental, that's safe, that can just hold me tight in dark, dark days? Is it a support group? Is it meditation? Is it your best friend? Where can I build in support to buffer this suffering? I can't push my way through grief, but I can into my suffering, right? And our culture believes that women are strong 
if they just keep pushing through, which is not true. The strongest women I know have suffered a measurable loss. The strongest women I know kept getting out of bed on hard days and kept saying, today is hard. Those are the women that I look to in my dark, 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 dark days. Because they got up again and they asked for help again. I was raised in a world, and I'm sure you were, of stuffing, right? Like, push those feelings down, swallow that lump in your throat, get out of it. You're going to be okay. Push through. Dust off your pants. Get up again. Fight again. Yes. Get up again. Fight again. But acknowledge that lump in your throat. Let it exist for what it needs to exist. Speak truth to your experience and look all around you for ways to nurture support in yourself. Look for communities, look for people, look for experiences that can cultivate care and nurture yourself. We don't have to swallow that lump in our throat to be strong women. We're strong women because we showed up tonight. We're strong women because we're suffering and we are aware that we need more support to buffer that suffering, right? And we're showing up again and we're fighting again. We're also raising our hand and saying, this is hard. And I don't think I should have to do this alone. Because if someone comes in and sisters me, builds up next to me and says, this is hard. But you are not alone. I am in this trench. I see your pain. I see it. I acknowledge it. And I can't imagine it. But I'm with you in it. It's how we buffer that support. And it's how we break that cultural barrier of swallow the lump in your throat, get up, dust off your pants, you're fine, right? You're pushing against the style that we were raised in. We're pushing against the style of, of women that are brave and strong. And we are saying, I am brave and strong because I'm asking for help, right? So how do we do it, right? How do we survive immeasurable things? Peter Ponzi said, let me be to my sad self hereafter kind. Always surveying what is kind and what feels good. I have found myself on the floor of a hot yoga studio. I have heard my deepest voice of pain on that floor of that yoga studio. I have heard my deepest voice of pain wrapped into a friend's arms or at the dinner table of a support group, right? How can I seek kindness for myself? How can I nurture myself? There may have been a person in your life that loved you well. And that person may have held you or said things to you or done things for you that were the kindest things and just felt like complete nurture. Explore that in yourself. What type of nurture do I need to be safe in this space and to just be, right? If you didn't have that, that is an immeasurable grief. How can you find it? someone give that to you? Can you ask for that? Doing things that implement kindness and safety during a grief journey is how we buffer suffering and how we, how we implement the experience of grieving well, right? Of letting ourselves just grieve. Kindness and grief can be productive to our body by acknowledging the pain that it's suffering and by letting our brain say, yes, this is bad and painful. And it just is. A lot of people do that through activities that they can see nurture through. That desire to be a mother, to hold that baby, to nurture that baby begins in infertility and loss journeys by nurturing ourselves. By nurturing ourselves through acknowledging this immense hole in our heart and the immense need for nurture for ourselves, 
maybe even to nurture someone else. So a lot of my clients like to do things like bake, cook, see beautiful products, nurture someone they love through that or themselves, right? Maybe it's writing and journaling and, and you don't know what to write. You don't know what to say, but you just show up at your journal with a pen and you just bear your soul. The things that I've written in my journal, I never could have understood in my mind. When I put that pen to paper, beautiful things, hard things, scary things came out. I remember before all my treatments, I would sit in front of my journal and I would just feel like I had nothing to write. And then there were thousands of words on that paper giving me insight into my own awareness that I didn't have initially. Maybe art's your medium, molding something from clay or paint, taking a blank canvas and making it vibrant or dark. Maybe it's moving your body and reminding you that your body has not failed you, right? Restoring your belief in your body not to fail you. A lot of times in grief, it's just being brave enough to say what the loss is to sit next to someone and look in their eyes and say, this is what I miss. This is what I'm longing for. This is the hole in my heart. And asking for them not to fix it, but for them to look at that hole too with you and hold your hand during it. I always say that, you know, when someone's going through grief that they may not have a person that can walk alongside them and hold them safely. And so, you know, Nicole and I did a podcast recently about the importance of therapy and the importance of acknowledging when you need help. And so I always believe that therapy can be a beautiful neutral space to process and say the darkest things and feel safe in that. Come as you are, right? And so if you don't have a support system or your support system, you just need a little bit more to sister you up, to build into you, I would love to walk that journey with you or help you find someone who's capable of holding that for you, okay? Meeting your need through therapy is absolutely a beautiful way to process grief and to sister into yourself with support, to decrease that suffering and have a space where you can just be. If you are struggling in your grief journey tonight, please feel free to reach out to Nicole or me, and we would love to connect you with a safe space. Grief is not something that anyone should walk alone. Sadness is treated with human connection. That's what Dr. Pauline Boss said. You aren't alone, and you shouldn't walk this alone. Please feel free to reach out to Nicole or I so we can help you find supports and ways to decrease suffering and increase belief in yourself. We believe in you and we want you to believe in yourself as well. You're welcome to reach out to me. My website is thecouchtherapy.org. My personal email is emily at thecouchtherapy.org. One word. Feel free to reach out and I would love to connect you with a therapist in your area that matches your personality style and your insurance and, and your emotional needs. I know Nicole would be happy to do the same. Thank you guys for holding space for me tonight to come to you so vulnerably and say that grief is yours, but you don't have to do it alone. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I hope you were encouraged by that. That was so, so good. I have to get my notes out. I love how just Emily really just poured into us and encouraged us to just be. Just be in that moment. Feel all of the feelings. And most importantly, this was my jam right here. How she mentioned about just seeking kindness for ourselves. I know, I don't know about you, but I can just be so hard on myself and just compare myself to other people, but knowing that this is my own personal walk and I can give myself grace and I can show myself kindness. So Emily, thank you so much for just sharing that with us. And I definitely will be connecting you guys to Emily and I will share her contact information with you all uh, because she does offer a free consultation. Um, and since everything is online right now, you can, no matter where you are in the world, 
get connected to Emily and seek um, just some guidance and some help if you need it. Um, once Emily told me, uh, said this on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, and she said, you do not need to be broken uh, to need therapy and to seek therapy. And she is so right about that. Um, so you guys, I just encourage you, if you need anything, just someone to talk to, someone to walk alongside you, someone to pray with you or just care for you, reach out to us. We are here for you. I really do appreciate you joining us today for our How to Process Grief webinar. Uh, we will be sending out some discussion questions and reflection questions uh, just for you to kind of walk through um, everything that you heard and you learned today. Um, also, we are having a giveaway. So if you made it all the way through, I definitely want you just to drop your information either in the chat, okay, or email us, let us know what you thought and you will be entered in this awesome, awesome giveaway. Um, it has this great book. I'm forgetting what it's called. It's Okay That You're Not Okay by Megan uh, Devine. Then our awesome Hope Bible Study. Um, you'll get a journal and then we're sneaking some really great things in there as well. And so thank you for joining us. If you need anything at all, we are here for you and you are not alone. Thank you. Thank you.